Hello friend, welcome again to Zuzukorin's Expert Summoner Progression Guide. This series offers you a recommended boss and gear progression, so that you can have a smooth summoner journey of your own. I'm Zuzukorin and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzukorin family. Last time, we defeated the Wall of Flesh and entered hard mode. We immediately got our hard mode summoner armor set and the spider staff as well. We are well geared for the mechanical bosses. We also farm for the components of the cool whip, so we'll craft that today. Let's begin by getting our hard mode anvil, which allows us to craft all our hard mode items. Using the pawn hammer, break some altars. We have cobalt, orihalcum, and titanium. Not bad, but not very useful for us. We won't be needing too much hard mode ores. To mine cobalt, you need the molten pickaxe made of hellstone. Just get enough ore for the cobalt pickaxe, it's not too useful. Somehow there's a mimic below our gem tree farm, so that's nice. Oh, it dropped a titan glove, which is kind of interesting. The titan glove is a melee accessory, but it actually enables auto swing on whips. So with this equipped, you can simply hold down your mouse button to whip continuously. I'm not too sure if I would use it. Probably not, but you can if you like the auto swing. I forgot to mention this, but if you want, you can also buy the leaf wings from the witch doctor at night, if he lives in the house in the jungle. Leaf wings got nerfed, so you can skip them if you want. We'll go for the frozen wings immediately. I'll buy them cause I can't really live without wings, especially for building. I think this is the last patch of cobalt we need. Just smelt your bars and craft the cobalt pickaxe. It's not useful for other things as a summoner. Now we can go for Orihalcum. Orihalcum is generated lower than cobalt, so try going lower into your world if you still can't find any. Oh, we got some already. Orihalcum is this pink ore, and if your world has Mithril instead, it'll be a pale green ore. It's the same basically. We'll need some of this because we need to craft the Orihalcum anvil. Smelt your bars and make the anvil. You can make the pick and get titanium, but I wouldn't really bother as a summoner. With that, we can make the cool whip, which is our first hard mode whip upgrade, especially if you didn't get the firecracker from the wall of flesh. The cool whip summons a snowflake that attacks enemies, but it's honestly not that great. It's extra good for worm type enemies like the destroyer, but it's better than nothing I guess. I flattened out this area as well, for our arena, but I think I want to make a Dread Nautilus farm first, just in the off chance that we get a Blood Moon. The Dread Nautilus drops the Sanguine Staff, which is a summon that can really carry you for some time. It's not too hard to build this farm, but if you need more info, check out this video. Link is in the description below. I don't want this video to get too long, so I won't explain it here. There we go. I'll use the spider staff against the bosses, just to show you it can be done. If you want to wait until you get a sanguine staff, you can, it makes the fight so much easier. But you don't really need one. Well, it seems that it's going to be a terrible night. This means that the twins are going to naturally spawn. I'm not going to be able to do it without a proper arena. But if you're super mechanically good like some people out there, you probably can. Let's just have a taste of how it's like without any preparation. Why hello? Let's see how far it goes. Hmm, I'm getting hit a little bit too much already. I think I'm too used to better wings. Yep, this is bad. Let's just get it over with. There we go, simple, no challenge at all. Anyway, let's take some time to build a proper arena. Expert mode arenas need a little more dedication. It's going fine, all you need are a few platforms along the sky. I've built mine with some solid blocks, mostly to block some attacks. Wow, quick block replace is amazing, it makes building so much easier. So for your arena, it is recommended to put some honey pockets, which will boost your regeneration when you run past it. Just be careful, because you can get caught in the gap if you're not running at full speed. Remember to add some campfires as well. You don't need to put so many like me, about 2 or 3 would be enough. But I like having symmetry and uniformity. It's just the small peeve that I have. Please don't follow what I'm doing. Remember to add some heart lanterns and stars in a bottle as well. 
This I can't really spam, it's pretty expensive to make, so about 2 to 3 should cover your whole arena nicely. Since it's raining, I'm here at the ice biome for more ice golems. We want the ice feather that it drops to craft our frozen wings. The frozen wings got nerfed as well, but they're still pretty good, much better than leaf ones. Oh, we got it! Great, that's lucky. Let me finish my arena first. I recommend you to add some sunflowers to your arena as well. They boost your movement speed and reduce enemy spawns. Just use dirt blocks, then plant some grass seeds bought from the dryad, then place your sunflowers down. Sunflowers can be bought from her too. Once again, a few would be enough. Please don't do what I'm doing. Now we'll need Souls of Flight, which is obtained from wyverns. Wyverns spawn in the sky biomes and are pretty tough. They're easy to dodge with a simple bridge, so let's make one. Okay, so we got one already. We might be able to kill it, but I don't know about that. My gosh, it almost died. Wyverns are easy to dodge with a simple bridge, so let's make one. There we go, I've added a water candle too. All you need to do is dash towards it before it flies to you. It's easy to avoid if you have some space. The snowflake does pretty well against it, but the spiders not really. Nice, let's grab the souls of flight. You need 20 for a pair of wings, so you'll always need at least 2 wyverns. So let's craft the frozen wings which will help us in the twins fight. They are really expensive to reforge though. I might need to get some money by harvesting our gem tree farm. I've got a few more suspicious eyes, so I think I'll do a little bit of that too. Well, that's some pretty good money. The Crimtain ore is worth so much. Ooh, warding on the first try. Nice. Let's gather a few more souls of light to summon the twins. Wow, it's a party up there, thanks to the Wired Crab statue. That's nice. Craft a mechanical eye using souls of light, iron bars, and lenses to summon the twins. I recommend doing the twins first for a summon weapon, but if they're too hard, you can try another one. It's up to you. As per usual, it's probably a wise idea to focus Spasmatism first. Spasmatism is more dangerous due to its flame attack. The main challenge is dodging both the eyes when they start dashing at you. It's probably not a good idea to stay too deep into the arena like me. I'm being pretty sloppy with this. It's just been too long since I've last done this on Expert, I guess. The reason spiders are so good is because they stick onto the target. If you continually summon them onto spasmatism, they will constantly do damage even as it's moving around. That's the good thing about spiders versus the twins. Oh, I think spasmatism should be transforming soon. It has been somewhat smooth so far, but this is going to be difficult. The flame attack is still the most dangerous thing in this fight, so keep your distance. So if you notice, the solid blocks I use actually block both the lasers and the flames, which is somewhat useful sometimes. Whoa, that's bad. Yeah, that's really bad. I really hope we don't die. Whoa, that brain of confusion was lucky. Oh yeah, our spiders finally got spares. Finally, we can breathe a little. Retinazer isn't too threatening when he hasn't transformed. So let's just catch our breath. In expert mode, Retinazer seems to lead his shot sometimes. That means that even if you continually move, he can still hit you sometimes. This is pretty annoying and dangerous. But well, let's just keep our distance. Okay, I think he's about to transform soon. Man, the Brain of Confusion's new dodge ability is amazing. Oh, there he is. He's transforming. Now, the fight is getting pretty dangerous again. The lasers are rapid and hard to avoid. The easiest way to avoid them is actually just to fly upwards to avoid most of it. However, if you're using leaf wings, the speed of ascent might not be enough. With our frozen wings, we are just barely clipping through. Just dodge everything as per usual. The sky is actually a great place to dodge. It's large, open, and falling is actually a solid way to avoid attacks. Well, there we go! Woohoo! That was close. Really sloppy, and a little too close for comfort. But I can't believe we did it on the first try though. That was amazing. 
There's not much we're interested from in the treasure bag, but the hollowed bars and soles of sight is important. Most of you will probably stumble across this item by now. The black lens is a rare drop from Demon Eyes. By this time of your playthrough, you probably found one already. If you don't have one, you can farm for it or you can just skip it. Combining this with hollowed bars and souls of sight makes the Optic Staff, a summon weapon that summons mini twins. Each summon is a pair of twins, so with 5 summon slots, we have a total of 10 eyes flying around. I'm not a fan of this summon weapon, the AI is pretty stupid and the eyes get stuck a lot. It's not very effective as well, I'll show you why later. What this staff excels in is dealing with multiple enemies. Because there are so many of them, they can split up and attack different enemies. But look at this slime. Clearly more than one beam hit, but it only got hit once. This is the main issue with this weapon. Even though so many rapid hits are occurring, getting hit seems to give the enemy an invincibility frame. So our damage output is always lower than what it could be. A pity actually but still pretty effective against multi-segmented enemies like the Destroyer. Well, with that done, we are pretty comfortable in hard mode now. Next time, we can take down the remaining two mechanical bosses and start preparing for Plantera. Summoners are beginning to get even stronger now, and we'll be pretty strong as hard mode progresses. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon too, so you won't miss the next episode of our Summoner Progression Guide. This has been Zuzucorn Games. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!